like popping on, eh? It's like, alright, remember guys, always remember to breathe and drink water. Gotta be like the fucking Wii Fit Trainer today, baby. I gotta, gotta do some deep breathing right now before I get into you this. You got it. You gotta fuck the Wii Fit Trainer. I've never been with an albino before. I'd be into it. Loki, me too. So, um... Hello, everyone. So, if you guys... Welcome. Have, if you, uh, did your breathing exercises for the last, uh, 45 seconds, um, yeah, guys, welcome. I'm about to hijack this intro. Hi, guys. For the fourth time again. <laughs> uh, this is the Double D Experience podcast. Um... Yeah, it's not the only thing that got hijacked yeah, from you today. Dave, David's, uh, having a bit of a conniption, so I'm gonna just, uh, let him, uh, breathe in that corner <laughs> over there. In, that little, in his little, in his little goblin corner. And, uh... <laughs> And, uh, uh, sometimes breathing, sometimes drinking water, but always getting fucked over by some unknown forces at work here. So, uh, I'm going to let, uh, I, I mean, one hell of an intro, I guess, but, <laughs> but uh, I'm going to just let, um, cause, uh, David has some words, uh, for, I guess for someone, I don't know, like, I guess someone, I would assume pissed him the fuck off. And, Imagine uh, it's you. Imagine, like, it's the plot twist. Like, this whole time I was telling you I wanted to go off on something, I'm just like, and then I start the intro, like, past the intro. Fuck, Dennis! Like, I just, you know, I if, just go if, off. If that was the case, I would just kind of sit there and, like, <laughs> like, I would just let David go off. Like, speaking to you guys are quick, real quick, like, speaking to you guys, I would let David go off and I would just sit there and take it because I would be thinking in my deep, dark thoughts that, you know what, I probably did something. I probably did something. Like, I don't even know what it is, but it's just like, I, I probably did something that pissed him off. But it's just like, I just think accept it at that point. Because like, you know, it's, it's like, it's always funny until it happens to you. You know? Oh, yeah. Like when you see someone getting chewed out, right? It's just like, you can't help but be like, you know? But then when it happens to you, obviously, you just kind of like, it's like, oh. Uh, it's not funny no more, right? Like, it's My always... ex-girlfriend was a lesbian. And when that happens to Ross Geller, everybody laughs their ass off when they're watching Friends. <laughs> It's not fucking funny when that happens to you in real life. Yeah. It's a dark, horrible feeling that I would not wish on the my worst enemy. Genuinely, I would not wish that upon. But I'm bringing that up specifically. Oh yes, yeah, so yes. Oh boy, uh, not my not my ex. That's not, I'm not about to be that guy who like no, goes no, no, over no, no, no. exes on a podcast. I'm bringing it in because it's sort of relative. Go go ahead. Okay. All right, no guys, I'm gonna like be I'm gonna be quiet for a good chunk of this because like you know this is just gonna be David like popping off here and then popping we'll, we'll on. See. We'll, yeah, we'll see. We'll so. see if I pop on or pop I, I, off or whatever. Yeah, but I'm, I need we'll to go ask. Go, go on. Have, go all right, have you have you all had your shots? Like listening to this episode right now because you, you probably need to be vaccinated because I'm about to put some straight cancer in your ears. <laughs> <laughs> have you have you all done your deep breathing exercises already? <laughs> have you have you all drank your water? Have y'all drank your, your um your... Aquafina sponsored water by the Double D Experience? <laughs> That's Coca Cola, by the way. We'd we'd probably get fucking Dasani or some shit garbage ass fucking. Salt oh no, water. you said you said Aquafina, right? No, Dasani, I said Aquafina. Dasani I said Aquafina. We would probably get Dasani yeah. because it's fucking literal. It's literally dog water. But it's also <laughs> Coca Cola, like. We get oh, hosted Coca by Coca Cola. You know, I'm just saying it's Coca Cola. I'm just saying. Okay. Okay, that's enough stalling. Fucking, I'm gonna start this off with a question, Dennis. Yep. You know, a lot of people say uh, when the worst thing that can happen to you, yeah, when you ask out a woman, mm -hmm. is she says no. Yep. Yeah. Not the worst thing. It's honestly not. No, it's not. It's, you know, she could she could say ew. Yeah, like there's way worse <laughs> things, honestly. Oh, there's a lot of things that can happen. So here's what I'm going about. I was just minding my own business. Mm -hmm. Walking in... Actually, I wasn't minding my own business. I was going into another business, actually, for my <laughs> job. And uh, yes, I was selling uh, the product that I sell to them, the service mm -hmm. that I sell. They were all into it. Very smooth process going in and out. I was able to set it up nice and easy, which I'm not always able to do. Uh, the call that we have to do went very smoothly, and I did my pitch mwah, perfectly with the old Natuna spin the way that he was taught. So, after all is said and done, I notice, um, <laughs> I notice, uh, one of their employees mm -hmm. has got a tattoo mm. of that fucking, uh, Pokemon. <laughs> Do you She's know got a which one? It's the one that swings around a little bone and, oh, you know, Cubo. it's got... 
Uh, sure. <laughs> it's Cubo. It's Cubo. <laughs> Pokemon be like, what's the Pokemon that swings around that bone? And it kind of looks like hey, a guys, Q. Oh, hey, Q-Bone. Hey guys, <laughs> yes, you, Q-Bone. You, you want to know something too? When David was trying to think of the name, he was like jerking his hand off in a motion that like, I was just like, you know, it just looked eerily similar to, you know, Q in your bone, if you know what I mean. Like, you know, it's, it's just, you know, like, I think, uh. Anyways, I don't even know where I was going with that. Go on. No, no, it's, it's relative on. because that's probably what I'm going to have to do for the rest of my life. Because, um, mm. and I might censor that whole bit because I, I I feel like that's like sort of a specificity about this person that she has a tattoo of this particular Pokemon. Like so she's going like, to watch this fucking maybe, podcast. Maybe, 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 maybe. So, um, I, I tell her that, you know, like, oh, I work for Nintendo a couple months out of the year. You know, bitches love Nintendo. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just fucking around here, but seriously. <laughs> and um, she happens to live in the same town as me. On top of that, okay. So I was like, okay, you know, like she's she's into Pokemon. We related on uh, like, you know, like in Nintendo a bit, and she lives in like the very near to me. I'm gonna ask her out. So I did, and I uh, asked her out for coffee. Uh, she says yes, and she gives me her number. Mm-hmm. I take that number mm. and I put it in my fern. Mm. So, I leave the place. Mm. All, all, uh, I'm, I'm wide-eyed, you know, happy, yes. six foot five, and closer to the sun. Yeah. Sunshine, sunshine. Yeah. lollipops, and rainbows that are gay. It's, um, yeah. I get in my car. I get ready to go to the next spot. I sold to this place. I made good money today. I, uh, I, I, I asked a girl out, literally felt no fear. Just went mm. in, did my thing. It felt great. I'm not even out of the goddamn parking lot yet. Yeah. And I get a call. Yeah. From the owner of the store. Yeah. This was a pharmacy, by the way. Okay. So, uh, not to paraphrase the great... Oh, yeah. Not to paraphrase the great Dennis... But the man, uh, the man who owned this pharmacy, he talked, he talked, uh, he talked like this. He, they was, they was ran by a lovely Indian couple. Mm -hmm. These two people. Very forthright with the, like, the discounts and stuff that they wanted through the program, you know? They really mm -hmm. wanted to make sure they weren't getting fucked, even though it's a free product. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah. I get a call from the owner, mm. right? And you're gonna like this. Because of what I did in that store, this motherfucker essentially threatened to sue me. Did you hear that right? You got your ears checked? Properly? Did you, you you got that one, right? Yeah, that, that one registered inside your craniums right there in the frontal lobe that you hopefully have fully developed listening to this podcast? This motherfucker told me what I did by asking out one of his co-workers was illegal. I said, what? And he says, it's a, this is corporate. It's a corporate location. It wasn't. The guy sees himself that way because he sees himself as a legitimate competitor to, like, CVS and Walgreens and stuff like that. It's not. It's a privately owned business. If it was a corporate location, I wouldn't be in there selling it because I'm not allowed to do that. This guy, because specifically I asked out uh, his co-worker, uh, not his co-worker, his uh, subordinate, I should say, in his employee. place of business, his employee... Told me what I did was illegal. I said to delete a number from your phone, my friend. <laughs> you are, you, and not like you are, not ask me. He didn't ask me. He says, you are to delete your number from your phone. And I'm like, asking out your employee was against <laughs> the law. Which, by the way, it's not. <laughs> no. No, it's not. Uh, coworkers in a place of business, it can be against the uh, company's rule of enforcement, which in a lot of, depending on the work environment, it should be, frankly, because that shit breaks mm -hmm. up, things get messy, people have yeah, breakdowns, yeah. it affects office politics or whatever. And the worst thing that happens to you is you get fired. Mm. Unless you're a psychopath and you, you do something different. Like you bring a horse inside the office or something. You're like, Jenny, <laughs> take me back. Uh, yeah, just so disrupting like, the workplace, you know? Y yeah. I don't work with this girl. This yeah. is just one... Th I, I work in the field. I travel to a lot of different places. That's the one benefit I will say about being a traveling salesman. You get to you meet a lot of different people, see a lot of different places, which is something I guess I sort of need in my day-to-day -day life. 
but I'm starting to think that's not the case anymore. I'm starting to think that I should say fuck people and crowd my six foot five ass inside of a corner and play kill yourself by pink eye to myself over and over and over again until I just sort of die from excremental exposure. However, I love myself enough to not do that. Today though, Holy shit. Holy shit. Right as I'm finally feeling good. I'm feeling good about myself. I go in, no fear, asking this, you know, this, like, this lovely woman out. You know, she was, it was good. Did my thing. She said yes. But apparently I made her uncomfortable. And this fucking asshole on the phone was talking to me as if I fucking groped her or something. All I did was ask her out for coffee. That's all I did. I've been given advice to ask out girls for coffee before. What's more innocent than coffee? It leaks into your head. It makes you wired. It unleashes a little dopamine. Maybe we could talk about Pokemon some more. I was as innocent as could be. I would never lay a finger on somebody unless that was okay. I didn't know this person. We talked. Older than me by like, you know, just like not very much, like just a year or two or whatever. Mm -hmm. Fine age range. Wasn't inappropriate in that way. Perfect. But apparently, my simple presence of asking this girl out made her so uncomfortable in such a way that she thought that me in this store would have done something had she said no. Which, even though I feel validated, like, by my insecurities that I am a monster today by simply asking out a girl and uh, being treated in such a way by some very pissed off pharmacy owners... <laughs> It's not the truth. And eventually, what happened is, uh, I don't even know if it's true or not, because the guy put me on the phone with her wife, uh, with his wife, and said that just like, oh, like, you just, you know, you just made her a little uncomfortable, blah, 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 this and that, like, you know, we prefer you delete her number, or whatever, like, you, and like, and I'm like, that's cool, whatever. She could have said that herself, that's fine, what mm -hmm. the fuck would I have done to her, like, I'm a fucking marshmallow. Like, I literally cannot do anything to anybody, even if I wanted to. And God, I would never put my fucking hands on a woman. Let alone for rejecting me for a date. Like, what the fuck? What kind of... Like, like all this stuff was just assumed of me. Mm -hmm. You know, that I'm this fucking incel that would blame this woman or do anything by fucking her saying no to me. Which is not the truth. I'm gonna give a shout out to an old college friend of mine. Uh, I'll send to her name, I guess. Uh, Artemis. Ooh, beautiful girl. Was, uh, we were in a singing class together. My first year at Montclair when I was still super into that. Uh, I asked her out one day. Just went, Hoo! And just went bold in and did it. And she didn't say, uh, I have a boyfriend. You know? <laughs> and she wasn't like, ew. Just You're fucking ugly. She just literally said, oh, No thank you. Um, you're not really my type. And I'm like, that's cool. You know, that's okay. Yeah. And we moved on as being friends. And guess what happened? She invited me to her place where she was having a bunch of other people over for a big group meditation that she was having. She gave me a hug on the way in. I didn't even ask for it. I'm like, I, I get a hug? Oh, wow, thank you. And I gave her a little hug. She introduced me to meditation and put my mind into a state of being that I never thought it could get in at a time where my anxiety was peak. New, for first year at Montclair, this was when Trump just got elected on top mm -hmm. of that. So there was like, there was a huge discourse in the country and people were scared shitless. Um, I was too. And that was the calmest I'd felt in a week and I could sleep again and I felt all right. I didn't do anything to this girl again. I didn't ask her out again. I backed off. I didn't mm -hmm. fucking harass her or anything like that. She said, no, we moved on and peacefully as friends. I did nothing to these people to be treated like a fucking predator mm -hmm. in, in the way that I was. Especially after I took, you know, time out of my day, you know, giving them a free product, basically. Which, I'm probably gonna block their numbers, because I don't want to work with them at all. Oh, yeah, and, you know, not, not that I have to anymore, because I already sold them the shit. It doesn't matter anymore, and I could give less of a fuck at this point anyway. Mm -hmm. You know, they always say the worst thing that can be said to you is no. And... For the second time in a row of when I shot my shot with someone, I had my security, my insecurities insanely validated. Granted, mm -hmm. the last time I did it, this was a girl that I had asked out more than once. It, mm -hmm. it, it was it was a couple of times that I said me and her should hook up, but I tried to only ever do it when she was talking about horny shit to me. Yeah. But either way, that's something I have to hold. That was mm -hmm. multiple times. That is where it crosses that sort of territory. She does not talk to me anymore. Her prerogative. Yeah. Whatever. 
And it's fine anyway, because frankly, me and her had a pretty, you know, we were very different people. Like, I don't beat myself up for that anymore. I didn't know this girl. I, I thought, you know, likes Nintendo. Ask her out, whatever. She says no. I don't give a fuck. I don't know her. Yeah. You know what I mean? Why I would not beat myself up for that. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, you're not this... in high school no more. We're like, no, shit like no, that. no, no, no. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, go on, go on, go on. I did cry a little when Artemis rejected me. Because I was still 18. I was still... Uh, yeah, I still, yeah. Oh, oh, no, I wasn't. Oh, fuck, I was Oh, I just... Oh, shit. Oh, fuck. No, I wasn't. I was like 20, I think. But I was, I was still, still a vir- I was still a virgin. So even, there I was still a I was still a virgin, so that's why I was crying. Even I remember at that now. age. Even at that age, we're still like emotional boys. <laughs> like, you don't really grow out of it until like I feel as if you either grow out of it or you just get numb to it. It's just like, yeah, I'm an emotional mess, and you just go about your day knowing that you're an emotional mess and just kind of live with it, I guess. <laughs> but I will forever remind people that men's frontal lobes do not cease development. Until they are 25. I will forever remind people of that. Men, we're adults now, but we're not really. Men really don't, their brains are not fucking done until we're like halfway through the oven to 30. <laughs> you know what I mean? So what, what, I mean, in a, in the, or to the scientific sense, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. And, um. But everyone's experience is also different too, so. Like, this made me feel so bad in such a way, because the last couple times that I've shot my shot, I didn't get simple no's. I've been told off on and, you know, have been, like, made out to be a predator. And it hurts me so because I have been told by women that I have come off as intimidating before. Which a lot of them have never, ever been able to give me a straight answer because I don't understand. Like I said earlier, I am a fucking marshmallow. Mm. I, I can't do shit to be... I don't know how to fight, you know? <laughs> I own, I, own, I own a butterfly knife now. I showed it to Dennis the other day. I, I saw it in, like, this uh, outfit <laughs> shop that I was at. And I thought it was cool, and I wanted to be like this guy from Team Fortress 2. But, uh, and it's dull. A, it's, a, it's a cosplay item, I think, Yeah, it, it point, literally, like, it basically is a cosplay item. Like, I'll show it to Dennis right now, because, like, the thing is, the blade is, like, literally, like... Hold up, it's, like, fucking... I can't fucking... There we go. The blade is like very. Look at it. Look at how thick that. It's completely dull. Yeah. Look at it. I can fucking watch it, what I do. Ow. Like, see my, how I flipped it on my hands? If I did that with a real butterfly knife, it'd be no blood fingers. everywhere all over my keyboard right and, now. Uh, and no fingers. Like. It, and and also no fingers. I'm like that douchebag at the party, like where they play that game where they they put their hand out flat. Oh yeah, like, yeah. They go like. I know the game. Yeah. And then they get mad when they get stabbed, as if they didn't just let a drunk person fucking. Whatever. I, po- how did it get there? Where's the knife? Like, how, why did I get stabbed? Like, you know, it's like, shit like that. It's, it's I am this shit. spy. <laughs> no, but it'd be like, I am this, this spy. <laughs> From Team Fortress <laughs> You should definitely, for Halloween, get the spy Go as the outfit, spy. But then have the paper this paper mask disguise as well. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta not- have it. I have a friend who was very into Team Fortress 2 when I worked at the American Dream Mall. Mm. Who there's an item, right? It's like a little hat that you wear, but like it has like a ghost, like a little paper ghost protruding on it. And so he, you can oh. edit name tags and descriptions in Team Fortress 2 to be whatever. Ooh. And so he edited it. He put the name tag as, I'm not a shopping list. And then the, <laughs> the tag was, I'm a ghost. <laughs> Awesome. I the love it. best Spongebob reference. I'm not a shopping list. I'm a ghoul. <laughs> one, right. of the, one of the top ten best episodes for sure. Am it's I like, really going to defile this, this grave, grave for, for money? money? Of course I am. <laughs> <laughs> of course I am. That was me when they re-released Portal on the Switch. I was like, am I really about to buy this collection on inferior hardware just to buy Portal again? Of course I am! Like, you know, he's even, like, you watch that episode as a kid and you have no idea, like, the magnitude of, like, the heinous shit that he's actually doing. Like, grave robbing in and of itself is kind of really, like, on that weird, like, you know, you like, you know, it's like, I don't know how I feel about it too much. Already pretty bad. I no, no, that's what I mean. That, but that's what I mean. It's just kind of like, you know, you, you defiling someone else's grave, right? But on the one hand, it's like, you don't, it's not in the news enough for me to, like, actually, like, I guess, you know, because, like, you know, it, it, like, cause, you know, a good grave robber, 
is not going to get caught, obviously. So it's like, you know, like, we don't know, like, who the fuck, like, you know, has gone and, like, just dug up people's graves. Like, it's just kind of like, oh, <laughs> why is this dirt uneven? <laughs> like, <laughs> why is this guy's grave? Like, the, because if it has been dug up, like, two days ago. Is that the there, DIPD, like, the Dirt Investigating Division? Like, that's what I mean. I don't even know if there is. It's just, like, the fucking, what, uh, the uh, cemetery, uh. I don't know, like, I, there's a name for them, but, like, the guys who, like, uh, basically, the Undertaker, no, the guys who just basically go around, you know, in a cemetery and just kind of, like, you know, making sure at night that no one's, like, doing any funny business or whatever. What is a graveyard security worker called? Cemetery security guard jobs, um, because there is a word for it. Um, That's what I mean, yeah. There's, like, an old-timey word for it. Yeah. I want to know what it is. Grave? Oh, fuck. Uh, not, not gravekeeper, um... Not Undertaker. The Underminer. <laughs> Behold the Underminer. <laughs> hey, man. That's my hat. Give it Give back. It back. <laughs> oh, no. I've seen this before. Then you eat my brain and leave my body to the buzzards. <laughs> That's disgusting. Just want the we just hat want back. The hat. <laughs> Attack. <laughs> But, but uh, yeah, look at me, yeah. I'm Aaron Flint. Okay, sorry, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. sorry. <laughs> I gotta say, Mr. Krabs did live out a fantasy that night. He had a whole fucking he... army of zombies pop out of the dirt just to kill him, he... and he fucking went off. He, he he popped on. He also he popped on, Dennis. <laughs> he also got away with tons of heinous shit that went completely under our radar as children. We just That's always true. thought, like, all of the really skin flint piece of shit, almost like penny pen penny, I was penny pinching, penny pinching. <laughs> I'm like losing my words today. Like, it's like the penny pinching shit that he did was just, haha, that's funny. But then you actually, like, lived, like, you became adults and you've seen real life <laughs> Eugene Krabs is in your fucking life. And then yeah. you realize, like, this there is a why, like, SpongeBob is just timeless for that matter. It and is, honestly, yeah. it goes without saying. Like, it's just because all the sh people that grew up with the show all later realize that this is all shit that we were going to have to deal with at some point. And then also, some of the characters are going to be reflections of ourselves. Like, I always thought, oh, why Squidward always such a, you know, like, bleh all the time. Mm -hmm. And then, then you realize that, oh, I grew up to be this fucker, kind of, mm -hmm. like, you know, to like a healthy extent i guess because i think everyone's kind of got a bit of a squidward in them obviously you ever been out of college motherfucker you know what that is like you know no like employee wants to be a squidward <laughs> and then also that corporate video was like every other corporate video you've ever watched for any job in the fucking history of the world it is the same regurgitated shit that you hear all the time Basically saying that this is what a model employee looks like. And if you I, are not this, you are a piece of shit. I and you probably shit deserve morning. to get fired. Like, if you are not a bottle of sunshine every fucking day coming into work, you are a scumbag. You are a piece of shit. You are scum. You don't deserve to be here. Your negativity is rubbing off on everyone else. You should probably <sighs> leave. And it's like, bitch, I wish I could. But I have bills to pay. So fuck you. I'll put on this mask for eight hours because that's usually the amount of time that I'm working here. But once those eight hours are up, I'm taking that mask off. It's coming off. I can't wear it every fucking day. Dude, even working remote jobs and talking to people on Slack... And I hope to God my coworkers never find this because I actually do like them. But, you know, there are times when it's just like, you know how people talk at at work when it's not like I get like, it's kind of fairly corporate like where I work at. So everyone's just kind of like, great, awesome. And you just die a little inside every single time you say great or awesome. You oh, die yeah. a little. You die a little, man. Like. And this is nothing. I, I'm. I know. I, I. I did it again. I hijacked David's whole shtick. Again. No, it's fine. But, it's fine. But, it's but, your but, pod. It's no, your no, no, podcast I, I, as much as mine. But this. But my, my man was popping on and off, like you know, about just a lot of shit that he dealt with, and and I'm gonna respond to it now, like 
what David mentioned. Yeah, please do, because I want it, you to... I want you to validate more securities for me and let me know that I'm not a monster and that I've just had a very bad string of luck of, like, being rejected by women in a rude way, I should say, rather than just just telling me no or... Not that that's their fault. You could say no however you want, but at the same time, it's just like, fuck. I was threatened to be sued today. Yeah. For simply asking out a woman. Yeah. You know, they tell us, you know, you got to shoot your shots or whatever. You got to mm. be brave enough to, you know, do these things and move forward. What's the worst that could happen? This. Yeah. This could fucking happen. And like, it, it's like, you know, it's so shitty because they tell you, you know, your insecurities are never going to be validated. They're just going to say no. And that rejection will help you get better. And that's how mm. I felt even walking out. Because I had no fear asking this girl out. And I'm not going to lie, this job has helped me with that. Just going in, being a salesman, not trying to have commission breath has helped me not have pussy breath. Because I actually did authentically relate to this girl on something. Like, we both like Nintendo. Sick. And so, like, Mm. that's what made it all the more easier, because I didn't feel like I was forcing myself to do something uncomfortable. And what do I get fucking greeted with? A potential lawsuit. (laughs) That's the last thing that should ever happen to anybody when this goes down. Like, dude... If she was uncomfortable, just fucking tell me. What am I going to do? Like, even if I was that kind of jackass monster who Mm. would be like, what, you fucking bitch? Like, and like hit her or God forbid some shit, like, because she told me no. Your fucking bosses are right there. Like, I'm also outnumbered. There would be witnesses. Even if I was the kind of guy who, God forbid, would ever do something so fucking deplorable and despicable and heinous as to fucking... You know, do something like that to a woman just because I'm, you know, too much of a pussy to fucking take rejection. Mm. Like, no. Like, Jesus Christ, I, I I didn't mean to make anybody uncomfortable. Yeah, what I feel like right now, Dennis, is I feel like I made somebody deeply uncomfortable. Like, harassment levels of uncomfortable just for being a human being and, like, wanting to have love myself as well. You know what I mean? I haven't fucking... That's how shitty it feels right now, man. Mm. And I, if you, she just said no and we moved on and be like, oh, cool, you don't like me. Whatever. And then, like, it was nice talking to you. Bye. Just like I did with Artemis. Shoutouts to Artemis, an actual fucking, you know, ugh, no. Human no, being. Not, and here's the thing. Start I, I am going to say it just, a couple It just things. hurts, man. It's not I, even rejection. It's not even rejection. Not. It's being treated like a fucking monster. Yeah. I'm not a, I'm not a fucking predator. For harassing... I'm not a predator or harassing somebody for fucking asking someone out on a date. Mm-hmm. And I talked to this with my my female friend about this. It was an old co-worker of mine, another old co-worker of mine mm-hmm. from the American Dream. As, you know, we go back, you know, like, she's like been like yeah, a little yeah. sister to me. But I'm gonna be real, she gave me some pretty shitty advice. She was telling me that I just shouldn't ask girls out. I should just wait to, like, have girls be interested in me. And I'm like, that's how you don't get love. If you Mm -hmm. want love, you have to love first. Mm -hmm. That's how it happens. You know, you gotta be active with that shit. Being not active with that is how I wasn't able to have a rebound with my ex. That and a global pandemic that made it so that if I went out, I would bring a deadly disease home to my mom that Mm -hmm. I got from some fucking bitch on the corner street who was like, ah, you know, COVID times are hard. I'll suck your dick for $15. You know, whatever. And I'd be like, game on. But no. Like... (laughs) I, it's not rejection. I can take rejection. I'm a salesman. And you're a dude. I'm I'm a traveling, yeah, yeah, and I'm also a dude, but I'm a traveling salesman. I get rejected by 90% of the people I talk to, and that helps with talking to girls, which I was Mm -hmm. hoping this job wouldn't. It's part, one of the many reasons I haven't fucking quit yet, Mm -hmm. uh, but, uh, it's even the same. Asking her out, I felt literally no fear because I had something to authentically connect with her on, and that's what I get in return. So, Dennis, before you go off on how much you fucking despise women, (laughs) because <laughs> i know that's what you're about to do i was about to, i was gonna literally preface it by saying like i'm gonna come off these next 20 minutes i'm gonna come off as like probably the biggest woman hater on the face of the planet right now and this is also the reason why that i'm also sometimes a little touchy about talking like this because also one i don't have a social media accounts for you fucking mouth breathers to go and like you know message me at or whatever you're going to all, like, uh, just direct it to David because he's going to be the next... He's like the lightning rod for all that crap because he's the only one out of the two of us that actually has, one, a YouTube channel, and also, one, a Twitter where everyone will just throw, like, sling mud at his DMs, basically. I am Dennis's PR department. Yeah. And uh, he does a great job of it. 
And uh, I've only had one guy, basically, I don't know. I think, I don't know. I think he called me out or something about, like, he, he was been in a polyamorous relationship. Remember that guy? He yeah, was excited, I, like, I knew that's I who you were about to bring I, up. I, for one, I actually am in a polyamorous relationship. And we are actually very happy. It reminds and, me of that dude on fucking Side Talk who was just like, <laughs> I have seven female wives. Peep my Instagram. <laughs> That fucking just red, no shirt. He was wearing like an upside down hard hat. Guy is an is his own hype man, and is just so like got the conviction of everything that he say. But yeah, look, I'm gonna be real. Oh boy, I truly feel, I truly feel. One, I think in your case, you especially nowadays. I don't know, like in the year of our lord 2022 and even last couple of years since ever you know ever since the pandemic like basically it's the year or went. something i don't know if it's the year of our yeah. lord go on it is the year of entitlement in my opinion and i also truly think that uh because i also hear this you know uh from my little sister right and she says that you know every every now and then every now and then it's like you know uh <laughs> one time we were just getting leaving our car right and there was like a guy on our street who was actually uh he was just just walking down the street you know he's just walking down like right into some business and everything right and you know one thing that she said that kind of like uh did stick with me a bit was that like oh it must be so nice to be a guy and not have to worry about walking by yourself anywhere and I kind of do low-key agree. Like, yeah. there is, like, a bit of that fear. And, you know, me putting myself as, like, a girl or even, like, a woman. Like, you know. Yeah, like, obviously, you can't exactly just walk wherever the fuck you want. And, like, you know, without the threat of, like, ever being, like, kidnapped or God, God knows what, you know. Yeah. And. Yeah, that's true. And one other thing was that, you know. It is very easy. It is very easy being a girl and then also saying that you felt uncomfortable because here's the thing when they as soon as they even say that I am experiencing discomfort <laughs> in any way synonyms abound they even say that and eventually just immediately like not eventually immediately everyone just automatically just says like oh you okay like they go oh, like because you know like women love to be seen as all these like strong i don't know figures to look up to or whatever but they all whatever like you know they feel that way they automatically just regress to being a fucking child and i don't even know i guess maybe not being a child is the right word but like they automatically just kind of go and play like the i am a poor defenseless girl card and automatically just everyone just white knights for them and everything and here's the thing i wasn't there i was not there when that whole shit happened with david so obviously you know i don't really have all the facts you know i have david's word and i do believe him obviously like i don't think like you know i did delete you, her number like, by the way because even if it was yeah. true I yeah. was. I don't want to deal with. No, yeah, with you don't that. want to deal with that quagmire. Not even with like, her, but like her fucking employers, yeah, yeah. like those crazy ass people. Like, and yeah. also respecting their wishes. Like, you don't want me talking to her. Fine, whatever. I don't fucking care. But like, yeah, because I also don't want a lawsuit on my hands if it ever did happen. Like, I yeah. also truly feel. Part of me was just kind of like that mother, that Indian guy wanted to fuck her so bad. No, he, he, he like, had a he had a wife. That he, he, it did do not matter, man. How old was he? I mean, he was way older. Was he like 50, 60? Yeah, you know, his late 40s, his early 50s or whatever. He, I don't think yeah, that he, was the case. He, I mean, he, he, was, dude, th his, he was thinking dude, about it. He's been wife, thinking about dude, it. His wife said the same thing. His wife literally said the same thing to me. So, no, that that's not because he was trying to fucking get with <laughs> his, his employee as well, know, man. No, come mm. on, dude. That's not what it is. I know, no, I'm, I'm, ha I'm half count. I think what happened is I literally I'm, did make this girl uncomfortable okay. just okay, by no, no, asking no. her out. No, no, no. But, 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 that's why I'm going to that. Yeah. I was half capping, okay? I was trying to be funny. Trying to brighten up this whole kind of low key. I'm like, it's, I'm in the, the darkness, like in my room right now. There is no light except my setup right now at the moment. And, uh,. The other part of it is, <laughs> okay. I'm, even I'm even wearing black 
Like, I feel depressed just even in my clothes right now. I mean, you clock but, off work and then you just, you plop yourself on to here, my friend. And believe me, those meetings you were talking about are just like, yes, attitudes every morning. Again, I am a traveling salesman. We have shit like that every do, single do fucking you know? morning. They tell us all these dumbass stories, like with metaphors about gophers or some shit, yeah, as yeah. to why we should continue working for free half the half the time. It's like, ooh. Do 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 you know that gif of that dude who's just like kind of like vibing, right? Mm -hmm. And then he slowly, you see a gun come into frame, like right <laughs> pointing right to his fucking head. That's like about that's about like what it is. But I yeah. digress. Like going now, like about the girl, right? Ugh. girls are cowards they are cowards they are not exactly the very confrontational type usually usually you will find a couple that will call you out on your shit and obviously yeah they should you know like if i'm fucked up i obviously yeah call me out on it yeah and i'll take it because you know yeah i did fuck up but i've seen them also do like you know, i think there's not there's not no new information if you guys have dated at all in the last like four years minus even david like you any of you have dated around for that long like in the year of our lord like 2022 they're not exactly the most honest type of people because honesty is not built into them what women typically. in general typically yes and especially in this day and age that's a bold this, thing to say my friend in this day and age too it's because they don't have to their main modus operandi is not to be honest usually and especially in her case like you know, she did all of that she said on all the stuff that she did to her boss is a form of self-defense because one she's a coward she's not gonna go and honestly go to you and say like oh i didn't feel comfortable you doing that and, and that's why what, that's the first thing that i thought when you said that because typically they don't do that i hate They're to too interrupt afraid. you They're i hate to afraid. interrupt you but i it's strange because it really didn't feel that way at all because she just said yes to me asking her out, asked for coffee. She wrote down mm. her number for me, says she doesn't normally give out her number. And I'm like, oh, okay. Uh, and I said, I'll text you, you know, whatever. And then even walking away, like, she was telling me, like, how she was, she started talking about trauma or some shit. About, like, how, like, she had, like, a bad, like, uh, she had, like, a bad breakup at some point or whatever. And, like, she brought that up. Yeah. And I was like, sick, me too. So I'm like, that's another thing that, like, was building me up. I'm just like, maybe we could connect on that as well. And then... Five minutes later when I leave the store, I'm getting a call from her boss telling me about how uncomfortable that whole situation made her. Let me let me cut Just you off there real quick. being asked out. Let me cut you off there real quick. No, that because, was it. I was done. I was no, done. No, no, no. Because go, go, go also, off. because at the same time, again, like, people have their experiences. And obviously, they take what they can get from it. And usually, you know, when people have been in, like, situations, I guess, like, I guess what? She's, I don't know. Like, it's just so weird. Because, like, honestly, in this day and age, most girls don't really get asked out that much because it's a dying art in my opinion and no, also at, at the same time how old was this girl you thought she was a bit older than you right she was 28 she was 28 okay uh wow she damn i'm old fuck <laughs> right i said the same yeah. thing i'm like that's in my dating pool now and i was like oh no. i was like oh shit like that's yeah. like closer to oh which it, my last girlfriend was fucking. My last girlfriend was in her thirties, so like I'm the last fucking person. <laughs> no, 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 that's fair. <laughs> Who should be no, saying no, that there's shit? No, no judgment on that at all. But no, it's no, just... I know. But like when I found out she was 28, like I had that same feeling. Like I low key got a little depressed. I was like, oh shit, that's closer to my. Oh, oh, but you all, I'm but... closer to the. Oh but no. We all kind of knew you liked older women, so it's like not really. Well, yeah, but I mean, like milf. She was 28. So what? <laughs> it's not. It's not a milf. So what? That she is not a MILF. She's she about to beat her. You have to be at least 35 to be a MILF. That's the cutoff. Yeah, you, Everybody knows. If if you are not old nah, enough to run nah, for president. Nah, nah, nah. You if you are 30. not old enough, if you are not if old you are, enough to run for if president. You, if you are a white girl that's 31, sometimes you're already getting old enough to look like a MILF. That's just how it is, though. Yeah, you kind of have to smoke, well, though, white, to do that. White, white, white women age, like, beats. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's funny that you should mention that because I had, uh, I got sushi and like a protein shake at the same place, uh, yeah. today. And I was just on the phone because another thick shitty thing that happened to me today is because like the service I sell was fucking up. And now the dude, uh, one dude who called me wanting to cancel, which means guess what? I don't get paid. Uh, even though <laughs> I did my job properly. Um, I was talking to the dude on the phone and then the guy, uh, chopping up my sushi in the back. He was like, that sounded so sexual. Uh, he, um, 
he was talking to me about like you have such go- you have such good voice you have such an <laughs> amazing voice and then as i'm leaving he was talking to me about like you're such good voice you're so handsome too like all these nice things to me it's like was this guy every actually time asian yeah an old asian older asian man yes okay. and he and it was like Every time that, like, I have, like, some sort of shitty, horrible thing happen to me during the day, like, mm. something like that happens where somebody just compliments the fuck out of me for no yeah. reason. I found that that happens a it's lot. It's like the yin and yang. Like It, re- it really is. Yeah, yin and yang. And, like, while this man was quite exactly the exact polar opposite of what I am looking for in a partner. <laughs> an old man, as opposed to a young <laughs> woman. Even though it was literally the exact opposite. You know, I tried to take it for what it was and that, you know, like, like I was some good mm. karma at the very least because, you know, those people at that pharmacy made me feel like a fucking monster today for just wanting love. And that is why I wanted to sit on this podcast and talk with my best friend, Dennis. I, I hope not, even getting, not even getting Denise with that one. I'm not even going to go, like, for the meme Denise. I'm talking with my best friend, Dennis, to because I know when I do, I always feel better. I so, hope that place burns down to the ground. <laughs> don't say that. that that's, don't okay, say okay. that. That's incriminating. Kidding, that's kidding. incriminating. That's I that, like I'm. I'm actually gonna cut that. Like real shit. I'm actually gonna cut that. Right, one. What happened? I hope the place be... burns down to the ground. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Anything that can be used in a court of law can and will be used and held against your dick. I don't even know where the store is, man. I could have told you. No. <laughs> I'll just. I'll just, I'll just no. be. Like, I'll just be like, you know, me how I know me, like, oh, one time, two, low main, like, I don't know this guy. Who him? Who he? You're, you're in a voice call with me. Who he? You're in he a was... voice call with me. I don't know. It sounded like Goofy for a second. Like, Goofy, you gotta, fucking dude. All you gotta do is just play the deniability and just play it and die on that hill. And then they'll just relent and eventually just be like, all right, fuck, whatever. <laughs> It's like, oh, fuck it. It's like, fuck, whatever. You're free to go. Uh, It's just like, did you burn down this guy's store? And it's like, no. It's like, that's you. In the camera. We see you right there. Like, that is you. No. You wearing the same shirt as the time when you burned this place down. It's like, no. That ain't me. (laughs) No. It's like, where were you at on the, on the 18th of August? It's like, I was uh, fucking your mom. That's what I was doing, bitch. Whole, whole courtroom. Oh. It's like, oh, yeah. Like, even the judge is like, yeah. <laughs> even the judge is like, not guilty. Like, he just gets it because of, the, <laughs> because of the sick burn. On account even, of the sick burn. Even the judge is like, my hype man is, yeah, tell him. Tell him. <laughs> <laughs> Reminds me of that clip, like, because, girl, you are, quote, thicker than a bowl of oatmeal. <laughs> Yo, that you remember one, that fucking clip? That dude went to jail. Like, not oh. knowing that he became a humongous legend. Right? Like, after, <laughs> I mean, probably not the best. I think he already knew. Like, I'm probably going to go away for, like, ever. I'll probably die in prison. So it's like, fuck it. I might as well just be like... I might as well just go out in a blaze of glory. And to be fair, like, people get into jail for some of the... My man was trying to go out in a blaze of calm. Yeah. Like, people go to jail for a variety of reasons. It's usually either like, oh, you know, oh, I got caught selling pot, which I guess is slowly being decriminalized now, and to straight up murdering somebody. So obviously, if you're one of the former, and you being put away for 20, 30 years, I kind of do commiserate. That is some bullshit fucking crap that, like, you get, you know, put away for. It, It really is some bullshit. It's not even like you even sold cocaine. It's like, oh, weed. We weren't like 45 minutes into the show. That's a whole topic in and of itself about like Some, fucking yeah, no, like and shit. Something that I even I smoked and I will never want to do it again. It's just kind of how you it know is. how but, fucking racist I think the industry is because you arrest yeah. the fuck out of black people for smoking weed and then you look at all these like new like blooming marijuana business owners and Dude, they're all if, fucking white. They're all I was, white people. If I was a black dude who got caught, who got put in jail. Because I sold weed, and now I'm seeing like all these like yuppie ass white kids that are selling in their dispensaries. I would if fucking dude, Ashley, like would, uh, Ashley would, Lynn, is like selling her weed I now. Would, I would honestly go back to jail for arson. Like I would go back to if I was one of those guys, I would go back to jail just for arson alone. Like that, that's a rap sheet. It's like oh, uh, put away for twenty years for selling weed, right? Put away for 40 years because he burned down a place that sold weed. <laughs> so it's like, like, I would be that guy in jail. It's like, so what are you in here for? It's like, oh, I was in here for like 20 years, sold weed. 
so why are you back? It's like, oh, sold the place, uh, burned down a place that sold weed. <laughs> what a life that would be a hilarious fucking rap sheet it's just like selling weed decriminalized burned down a place that sold weed and then back in jail it's like not fucking blame (laughs) the man do not blame the man because that I, pisses me off. That pisses yeah. me off because all these like fucking like new blooming business owners for weed, yeah, yeah, Forbes yeah. thirty under thirty. When when, when <laughs> forty when forty years ago, forty years ago, this shit was honestly this was enough to put you away for life. Yeah, honestly, like you could have just not even like as far as the charges goes. Like and you know also like some states are like. Uh, they varied their sentences depending on like you know whatever crime that you committed like and what charges are brought against you or whatever but it's like you know uh, you know I do I obviously do hope that like that shit does slowly get decriminalized but I also really really feel for all them dudes that's, that's the thing it's like again you go to jail for killing your family you deserve to be under the jail that goes without fucking saying like, I don't even care like you know oh like this guy needs a psych you know, evaluation or whatever. It's like, no, this guy just just deserves to be under the jail, like forever, Mm -hmm. right? My homie sold, my homie Lamar sold weed on his street corner. I don't give a fuck. Like, it's Mm -hmm. like, it's the most harmless shit. Man's got to grind. It'd be one thing too, if that guy sold some harder shit, like, you know, heroin, crystal meth, uh, cocaine, shit like that. Because, you know, obviously cocaine is way more, criminalized than you know even weed like you can get... also a man-made drug yeah like you know you... what i mean weed literally grows in the fucking ground <laughs> <laughs> or like, in people's I... basements before all this like dispensaries started coming up which is <laughs> also technically the ground so yeah. you know what it's so, fine you know at the end like, of the day you know what that's I mean? right, yeah but yeah. so i digress i think you know uh going back to like you know david's a uh, little conundrum david Yo, yakanisu, you are not a monster i truly feel that was definitely some overreaction shit on her part. And I even do feel that I don't think, and here's the thing, I'm giving an olive branch to the three women that watch our show. <laughs> I'm giving an olive branch. To Shout out to like, um, Remy. Remy, Genesis. Genesis and uh, uh, my mom. Uh, Anyways, yeah. Does she uh, actually? <laughs> she actually did watch a couple of my episodes. <laughs> she like gave me a little pointers. It's like, you like talk too little you should talk more she probably listened to an episode where like i was venting about something <laughs> because there are times when the complete opposite is true me and dennis are both very long-winded people and we usually yeah. take turns you know what i mean like we've got we've had a pretty good flow i want to say yeah, yeah like as do. far as the show we really do like i'm proud of you like you it, know this it, it does kill me inside that oh my god you so guys, fucking italian holy like you, shit like, look at you like you guys don't have like you don't attention. see this man. He's fucking like, <laughs> gab- gabagool. Yeah, like, like you don't you see know, his hands right like, now. You guys, it kind of kills me that y'all don't have a longer attention span because I wish I could talk for three hours, but I also know no one wants to hear a guy talk for three hours. I do not have fucking time to edit this podcast for Gradu- three hours. Graduation, anymore. graduation speeches. I have never, like, you know, again, I. Obviously, do not actually wish this. But when I've been to a couple of them, and I've you've heard your principals talk or your dean of students talk for way too long, honestly, doesn't a part of you wish that you know s- someone someone shot this guy, like that he would stop talking, like with like what, violent, like, more violent like, than me today, like. like Don't you kind of just wish, like, someone just tackled this dude to the ground and just punched him in the face so that he'd stop talking? Like, I hear these guys' speeches, right? And, guys, we're going to wrap it up in a bit. You hear these guys' speeches, right? And it's the most scripted fucking thing you've ever heard in your goddamn life. And And on top of that... You are sweating your balls off because, oh, Mm. the school decided, oh, we have to have this outside. We have to have this when it's 99 fucking degrees outside where everyone's sweating their goddamn nuts off. I'm already wanting to rip this fucking robe off and just go like, you know, like Mel Gibson went like, Alba Cabra, like, you know, just like scream out into the fields. Like, it's just like you, you know, but like these guys just have to fucking talk 
because we care so much about what our dean of students has to say, right? We care so much about a guy who we've given 40k a year and his opinions. We just care so much, right? Like there's a time and a place, honestly, and people will argue, oh, well, the principal slash dean has to talk. Yeah, but he also doesn't have to talk for fucking an hour. Or an hour and a half, honestly. Like, like, our attention spans are not that vast, honestly. It is a wonder, too, because people back in the day, they could sit through a fucking Shakespeare play. Which was three to four hours on average. With intermissions, obviously. But it's like, people literally would sit there and just watch this shit. For fucking hours it'd be the whole night honestly and we just don't have that no more we just don't i can't i could barely sit through a two-hour movie now without it without me going like is this over yet are they even on the third act it's like you just wonder like when does shit fucking ending you know because it's sometimes it would just drag too fucking long if you're entertained for an hour for two hours and 40 like throughout that movie okay good for you it's the reason why i'm not watching avatar I'm not watching the second one. I'm walking the fuck out. After the first 10 minutes, if I'm not grabbed, like, if, if my attention is not grabbed within the first 10 minutes, I'm walking. I'm getting the fuck out of there. Like, me and David, like, think we're going to go there for the beams. Like, David, we are going. We are going, and I'm going to eat that $17 ticket price and leave within 10 minutes because it was so fucking boring. I am I'm telling you right now, and we will give our review. I believe you. About, and we will give our review for those first 10 minutes because you guys deserve it. I can't wait till the Mario Brothers movie trailer comes out and they start playing Jump because, from Eddie Van Halen. Because you guys are worth $17. You guys are worth eating me eating $17 for a fucking ticket for a movie that I'm not even going to watch. For me to God talk damn about. right. For me to talk about and then also rant about how shitty it was when not even f- finishing the rest of the two hours and 50 minutes of the movie. Like, we're just going to go and sit down. Go back home from the theater, plop our asses down, talk about this movie for the first 10 <laughs> talk minutes. Talk about the first 10 minutes. And, 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 and somehow, we're, you know like how some, there's like that saying of stretching a dollar? Yeah. We're going to stretch those 10 minutes that we watched. We are going to nitpick the fucking shit out of it. And somehow we are going to make it a full episode. And then you and I are going to say goodnight that night after we finish recording. And we're going to have that episode go up. I'm going to, and we're going to, I sometimes, I believe it or not, I actually do listen to our episodes, right? You know, like, yeah, just like to see like, you know, like, oh, maybe I could have done that better. You know, whatever. No, I believe and, it. I, like, I knew you, I knew you did. You never told me yeah. that, but I knew you did. Yeah. Like, and I'm going to just reply back to you. He's like, yo, David, you're like, yo, like, he's just replying back to me. He's like, yo, did we really make a 55 minute episode about a 10 minute section of a movie, essentially a preview that we didn't even finish. Like, we right. went off for 55 minutes, about 10 minutes. Why, yes, Dennis. Yes, we did. I want my $17 back. <laughs> I would just come in, because since, since I, I, we only watched like 10% of the movie, I'd be like, can I have 90% no, of my money back? It, it wouldn't even be 10% of the movie. It would be like a 95, point, really. Like, arbitrary 2.67 fucking percent of the movie. And then people, like, you know... I don't know. People are going to be sometimes coming out of it thinking like, "Oh my god, it was such a great movie. I loved it." Uh, ever seen. Oh, the guy who said, uh, you know, just Metacritic. Uh, it's a great movie. Uh, you know, whatever. Metacritic. And then, and then, like you know, like they're going to talk about like, "Oh yeah, Jake Sully like fucking stabbed his wife and like killed all his children and like in that one scene in the movie, dude, that was, was crazy." And then me and David are just going to be like, "Like, hey yo." Did we kind of low key miss a fire ass movie? Like, I was about to say, like, what if the movie actually fucks? <laughs> like, what if it? I know they, I know they can't because they don't have genitals. But what if it actually fucks? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, we missed out on the blue sea, man. On the blue sea. We we missed out on the blue sea. But the Avatar, a white man named Jake Sully. <laughs> Master of the Blue Sea. <laughs> I can't Casey, wait till the Mario Brothers movie comes out and they play. I, I, they play definitely. jump. They play jump from Eddie Van Halen in the trailer. Right? Wouldn't that be perfect? It would be it jump. Would be. 
It would be perfect. And, and 80s also, and, jump, uh, whatever. And also, Eddie Van Halen would be a fucking idiot not to take that money. Because they, like, Illumination would be more than willing to fork over the cash just to use that song. Yeah. They would be more than willing. And not to mention, they also got backed by Nintendo. Nintendo's yeah. are probably also bankrolling the whole shit anyway, so it's just kind of like... I think oh, Van Halen... Really- I think Van Halen is definitely going to need a lot of that money, considering the fact that he's dead. So where's kids then? His yeah. kids probably own his like, uh, you know, his estate or whatever. Yeah, his so. estate. So um, yeah. Um, case in point. Point is, keep keep butter buttering me up, butter me up, please. Fix my case, ego. Case in point. Women, fuck, suck, man. <laughs> Actual case in point, please. We gotta we gotta mm. wrap, and I need my self esteem yeah. fixed before we hit the hit the David. stop button. Only you, you are... can fix my self esteem. I project it onto others. <laughs> <laughs> That's a that's a lot of responsibility you just gave me, I, and I don't want it. <laughs> but I David. can't fix me. You <laughs> fix me. David, you are a beautiful person, Thank you. and it goes without saying that you're one of the best people I know. And I hope she gets tattoo poisoning or whatever that girl with the cue bone tattoo. And then, <laughs> but. What happened? Honestly, for me, I would just take it as probably definitely an outlier sort of situation because I like to think, you know, obviously there are plenty of there are plenty of women out there that, you know, are not going to be scared off because of something like that. And to be fair, again, that's the way that I prefer to do it as well. Like, you're going to go and ask someone out, just go and shoot your shot, and then they say no, then fuck. Like, then just go home. I feel like Carlton shooting his shot, but instead of just missing the (laughs) basket, instead of just missing the basket, a fucking bulldozer just plows through, like, the side of the wall of the gymnasium. (laughs) That's how I feel right now. Like, I didn't even miss. I didn't even fucking miss. I landed my basket, but as the buzzer beater is about to go down, a fucking bulldozer just runs through the fucking bleachers at the side of the gymnasium and just runs me over. (laughs) That was this scenario. But thank you. And uh, one thing that I need to remind myself of is that uh, my ex-girlfriend, you know, my, yeah, no, no, I know. My ex-girlfriend is uh, as much as I loved her, you know. As, uh, as our relationship had to end for, you know, the main obvious reason and that she said she wasn't into guys, according to her. Mm-hmm. I will forever remind myself. My dick. Made that woman. So fucking confused. That she would regularly tell me that I made her feel straight. And she stayed with me for a fucking year. Because of how good my cock hit her insides. Anyway, we're done. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> it's like you got to take away something, so you know. If that's I do got to take away something from that because you know she said she loved my voice. She said like it actually like aroused her, and that she, like she like it made her like she said as a fucking musician, like she appreciated the undertones mm. of it and stuff. So you know what? Maybe I just need to go back to finding the right kinds of girls, and it's not the ones with Pokemon tattoos. Thought I taught myself. Stay, those, yeah, uh, you got to stay away from those. Thought man. I, ta- thought I taught myself that a long they, time ago. They, they trouble. They trouble. Yeah. Man. Can't trust the girl with tattoos. The girl Ooh, with the dr- yeah. <laughs> the girl with the cue bone tattoo. <laughs> never, never from the Smash community. Never from the Smash community ever again, Morty. We're done. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Uh, I needed to vent my soul out a little bit. If it was cringe, I'm sorry. If it was based, then I'm not sorry. And uh, yeah, you can go ahead and follow us on Twitter at Double D Pod, please. Uh, at Instagram at the Double D Experience Twenty One. Dennis is posting memes there again for the world to see. Uh, I'm happy to see that. And uh, follow us on uh, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, uh, wherever Anchor, wherever you get your podcast. Please leave us a good review. Share the podcast with your friends as well if you want more people to listen to it. And also, if you're listening on YouTube.com slash Natunas, which is where I know most of you are, except for last week's episode, which didn't get that many views because it had blatant Game of Thrones fucking House of the Dragon spoilers in it. So I guess, I'm assuming that that's why that one kind of underperformed. Plus the thumbnail looked kind of <laughs> ugly, if I'm being honest, but uh, it's my own fault. Thank you for listening to me bear my soul because my self esteem was a fucking roller coaster today. And, uh, I, it's no man is a failure when he has friends. And that's why I started this podcast. And also many other reasons. Bye. Bye, guys.